On this week's show, we celebrate the life of a Lawrenceville icon. We're at the preparations for Allegro Council's cabaret, and we learn about the fascinating sport of squash. Lawrenceville's 10-minute newscast begins now. From the L10 studios inside the Lawrenceville School's historic Pop Hall, this is L10 with Guy L. Phillips. Hello and welcome. The annual student art show has begun, with a wide variety of pieces ranging from photography to painting to fashion design. The exhibition is open in the school's Grest Center of Visual Arts until February 28th. On Thursday of last week, Boyce JV Ice Hockey won the Scott Botcham Memorial Cup. This trophy is to commemorate the passing of the assistant coach's son last year. Last Thursday, the school celebrated Tuition Runs Out Day. It marks the point in the year where the generous gifts by donors become a necessary part of a Lawrenceville education. Boys and girls track and field teams won the Maple Championship this past Saturday. And a special shout out to track star Ariel Claxton for having broken the school record, which was in fact her own, in the girls 400 meter with a time of 58.56 seconds. Congratulations to the boys varsity swimming team for winning the state championship. Big Red swam at home against 13 other teams and defeated its closest opponent, Pingree, by 20 points. Thursday the 26th, Student Council will be having the House Winter Olympics. The event will be after classes in the Fieldhouse. Be sure to attend second form Shakespeare. This year's play is Macbeth. On the 26th, there will be a special screening for freshmen, and the following two nights will be available for general audiences. Now, we begin our main stories this week with some sad news. This past Wednesday evening, Jean Stevens passed away after a slight illness. She was 80 years old. Her time at Lawrenceville began when she attended dance classes here in the 1940s. She returned to the school when her husband, Wade Stevens, joined the faculty. For a decade following, they remained as housemasters to Hamill. She continued as an advisor to the Periwig Club following her husband's death in 1988 and is said to have participated in over 70 productions. We got a chance to speak to fifth former Alice Yang, who was a director of Black Box this school year, Chris Skoll, the director of theater, and Colette Burns, office manager to the performing arts department. I worked closely with her in rehearsals and um, she was a wonderful, wonderful faculty um, advisor for all of the shows that I've been involved in, so that's how I know her. Well, I'm given to understand that she was in 78 productions of Periwig, uh, five of which were musicals. Some of the guys could tell, like from this costume, I'm sure we could tell. Oh, uh, I know that one has to be Tea House of the August Moon, that one because of what she's wearing. My first memory of Jean was the, what you might call the honey and gravel voice. Hello, Chris, how are you? She was part of so many different things, being a house master's wife and acting on stage and just helping coaching students all the time she was here. If I ever was hesitant on a decision, I could always ask her for her opinion and that was really helpful in making decisions. Um, and she was really famous for um, saying things like enunciate and I can't hear you and that was really helpful for the actors. I'll never forget how charmed and appreciative I was when she invited my wife and myself over to her house for dinner right at the beginning of my tenure here. And of course, uh, we all know that she was the doyen of the theater here at Lawrenceville since probably 1957, perhaps. Uh, so we were quite thrilled to be invited over and we just had a, a lovely welcoming from her. And then of course, ever since she's she was as, as loyal and supportive as she could possibly be. Whether it was coaching or whether she just came to see it. Uh, she came to every single production. And once she told the actors, all right, you really have to memorize your lines now. You really have to get them down so that you can actually play with your lines and, and act. Um, the actors really did listen to her because she was so good at commanding a room. I really do feel like a part of the Lawrenceville School will feel like it lost a building. The passing of an era. She took care of us. And she's going to be truly, truly missed. We'd like to thank Mr. Cole, Ms. Burns, and Alice for allowing us to learn about this beloved person of our community. Her service will be held this Saturday in the chapel, and her reception in the KAC will follow. The cabaret put on by the Allegro Council will be on February 20th. Our reporter, Sienna, got to attend some of the rehearsals. I'm here at the Clark Music Center where we're going to hear from a couple of the Lawrenceville vocal music students who are preparing for this year's Winterfest Cabaret. The cabaret is an evening showcase that raises funds for the Lawrenceville Performing Arts Camp that happens each July and provides theatrical instruction to local students. Let's take a look. I'm Chibazayama from Union, New Jersey. And cabaret is 
this sort of hodgepodge <laughs> in a way of like a whole bunch of different kids all like singing musical theater songs from way back when like 1970s and before. Nothing said to hear all the different people who say because like you come to know these kids and you see them throughout classes and then like you may not think that they're like that into music theater, but then like when you see them perform, there was like a lot of really funny kids, a lot of really sad, like these really sad songs, things like that. And just like the wide variety of kids that show up to perform is like the best treat for cabaret. For once you have found your way there, you can never, never grow. I'm Amanda Tung and I'm a junior from Kirby. And the piece that I'm going to be singing um, in the Broadway cabaret is Never Never Land from Peter Pan. Um, and I'm super excited, kind of nervous because this is actually, aside from the musical, um, this is the first time I've performed solo to any group of audience. I usually do it with a group of people, so it's my first time. So I'm super excited to find out what it's going to be like, and I'm excited to share it with everyone. I'm Bram Medina. I'm a fifth former in Upper House. My piece is called All Through the Night. It's from a musical from the 30s called Anything Goes. Allegro to me is, I, I'd like to say, a classroom for both me and my audience. And I feel like we're sort of sharing something. We're sharing something that's very personal. We're sharing something that can be dramatic at times, but I feel like the audience like can always get caught up in it and can really go on the ride with us. So to me, Allegro is sharing a story, then, and that's always my favorite thing to do. Come see all the performers this Friday. This year's Winterfest Cabaret is dedicated to the memory of Gene Stevens. Thank you, Sianna. And finally, from the squash courts, we have our reporter, Jake, with an in-depth look at this fascinating sport. Thanks, Kyle. We're here at the Lavino Fieldhouse at the squash courts, where we had a chance to speak to some players and the coach about their season and the championship on this Saturday. Uh, I'm Sinclair. I'm a senior. I'm one of the captains of the girls' team. Yeah, my name is Esther. I'm also a captain. I'm a senior. I'm Cal. I'm a senior captain of the boys' team. Can you guys tell us a little bit about how you play squash? There's two opponents, and you guys sort of just hit the ball back and forth um, until the ball goes out. Until the ball goes out or it double bounces. Uh, a lettuce means you replay this, the point, and a stroke means uh, the points awards your opponent. And um, like I said, you uh, lose the point if it double bounces or if you can't um, return the ball. Can you tell us about some of the strongest teams in the Maple? I guess it would probably have to be us. Um, the girls' team at least has won Maples for the past 12 years in a row, so hopefully this weekend we'll have another win. Any competition? I think our biggest competition this year would be Hill. I'm here next to Rob Kresak, one of the girls' varsity coaches. Coach, can you tell us a little bit about the team? Uh, well, we're actually wrapping it up. Uh, we have Maples tomorrow, so the girls will be vying for, I think, maybe the 10th or 11th consecutive Maple title. We had a good year, it was up and down, we had a really young team. Um, we've been graduating a lot of kids over the last couple of years, but the girls fought hard, played well, uh, just finished top top eight at the, the Nationals in Division Two, so it's still a pretty solid season. Um, we do have some young girls, Virginia Schaus, who's, who's definitely up and coming, um, Carly Martinson, a uh, good looking freshman uh, that should do pretty well. Um, all in all, the girls have had a great attitude, uh, they work really hard, and uh, we're, we're looking forward to, to getting another Maple Wing tomorrow. We would like to thank the squash teams for letting us down here. They had a great season. Back to you, Gael. Thank you, Jake. And as it turns out, both teams won the Maple Championship. That is our show for Tuesday, February 17th, and our last show for the winter term. From all of us here at L10, thank you so much for watching. Good night.